Hello, my loves. Welcome back to another video here on Starseed Academy. My name is Jenny. Thank you so much for joining me for another video on this channel. So grateful for every single one of my beautiful subscribers and all of your comments, video requests, engagements, shares, likes, all of it. Um, so today we are continuing with the Halloween Academy. Um, during the month of October, we've been doing some really fun, spooky videos about all kinds of like darker spiritual matters which is actually super good to talk about anyway and to learn about anyway and today is no different today we're going to be talking about how to work with your shadow guides and i think this is super important for people to understand for like protection reasons um, but also for what you can gain from doing this kind of work with your shadow guides and how to do it and, and who to do it with and everything. So if you are someone that is working with your spirit guides, have you ever considered maybe working with shadow guides before? Do you think you might have any on your team? And have you had any, any experiences with that already? Let us know in the chat or not the chat, the comments. <laughs> um, okay. So I want to dive into this right away. So let me just have a little sip of the coffee, get yourself a nice warm drink, get cozy. We're going to jump right in. And of course, remember to subscribe on this channel if you haven't already for new videos every week. I'm thinking of doing a bonus video, thinking, not committing, thinking of doing a bonus video um, for Halloween day. Um, because I really wanted to do a video dressed up in my costume and that's not happening till you're seeing this Sunday, but I'm, I'm filming this on Friday. So the Halloween stuff isn't actually happening. Uh, the Halloween party's not till tomorrow. So we'll see if I, when we get back from that, if me and Brian want to get onto a video, I think it would be a lot of fun like we did last year. Okay. So potentially that could be happening on Halloween. So let's jump into today's video, how to work with your shadow guides. So the very first thing is that you need to vet the guide and make sure that it's somebody that you should be working with. That's so important. I probably don't have to say this because I've said it so many times in this channel, but you don't work with any spiritual beings without a sacred space, whether they're of the light or of shadow. Um, so sacred space, always, always, always. When you're doing a sacred space, just a quick reminder, you're surrounding yourselves with archangels, asking them to fill you up with their love, their healing, and their higher frequencies to help you start to rise up. And then you're calling on God source, whatever term you like for that, to bring the white light down into the crown chakra, down into the body. And then you state your intention. You know, for me, if I'm channeling, I say, please anchor me in the divine light of truth. Let everything that I channel be true. Um, let it be for the highest good of everyone involved, divinely times and orchestrated or something like that. If you're doing something on your own, you're working with your guides, your intention might be more something like, um, please anchor me into your, your, your light of truth would still be good because you still want everything that you receive as you're doing this to be true. Um, and please protect me and make, help me to, um, always like make sure that my actions are for my highest good and healing or something like that. So just always do that sacred space. Okay. The intention part is really powerful and, and connecting all of those ways. Okay. So sacred space would be the first thing that you would do. And then I, my suggestion, and I'm, I'm going to stand strong on this because I've seen what happens if it's not this way. My suggestion is that you only work with a shadow guide if they are a version of you. So that means that this shadow guide could be you in a parallel life, past life, future life, some other timeline. It's an experience that you are having or have had that you can connect to and learn from and help them and they can help you. That is the only shadow guide that I would work with. Now, what does that look like? It can look like anything. Your own shadow guide could be a gray alien. It could be a, a dark entity. Like it could be, it could just be anything in a lower realm. It could be any kind of like galactic, but lower than your 5d love consciousness. Um, so it looks like anything, but the caveat here is that you only work with them if they're a version of you. And that is a safety thing, right? So I would certainly not be just like any kind of shadow being wants to come on it. Hey, let's collaborate. Absolutely not. Um, or I have healing for you. Absolutely not. Or I have a message for you. Absolutely not. You don't like, it's not for me. Um, 
you know, like most of us just fought our way out of the lower realms and are on our ascension path up now. Um, you know, the soul journey is a circle and we have to descend in order to ascend. And so many of us worked very hard to get all the way down here to earth, slowly descending down through the dimensional realms to slowly get used to a descending frequency, which is a lot of work. And many very brave souls have gone even lower than earth and have just started to bring their way back up. There's no, there is absolutely nothing for you down there. If it's not a version of you, then it's not a part of your healing story. There's nothing for you down there. Um, there's just not, you know, like, um, I mean, if you are somebody that is working black magic or demonology or something like that, I can certainly see why you are working with that. Um, but even then, I would tell you to even only work with versions of yourself. Um, because if you're interested in that kind of stuff at all, I'm sure you have a version of you down there. That is some kind of like black witch or something. But I would also just caution like <laughs> the karma that you're creating by working black magic is just not worth it, right? So caveat number one sacred space always big caveat number two only if they are a version of you okay i can hear someone asking i can sometimes hear you guys i can hear someone asking well how would i even know if it was a version of me excellent question so this is where being trained in the clairs and channeling surpasses everything because a clairsentient is a lie detector uh, like a, a person trained in clairsentience able to feel energy and emotion and intention is a walking lie detector it is like and 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 these kinds of beings use telepathy which makes it even easier to tell to be honest with you so a being that's coming to you and telepathically having a conversation with you say it's a great alien let's use that example so say a great alien comes to me right and it comes out of nowhere. Maybe I'm meditating. It flashes into my third eye. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing here? And they're saying that they want to work with me or whatever. I would be able to feel energetically their intention, their emotion, and their um, like their their frequency, their their set point where they're at. And it, I would be able to feel if they were not, you know, like of a frequency of of love and above. Um, and I would also, and and there's no like fooling you when you are a clairsentient because you can't change the the frequency right so if someone is um some kind of a being is trying to fool you it's just the words that are fake the feeling isn't right they can't change their frequency in that moment and if they could shift their frequency they would actually no longer be a dark entity they would be you know a higher vibe already and then they would be okay to work with so clairsentience would probably be what i would use to determine i mean among my other clairs but i would really be feeling hard into wait a minute is what you're saying the words coming out of your mouth and what you're saying you want to work with me on and who you are actually matching what I'm feeling coming off of you. And if there's no match, then there's something off. There's dishonesty happening there, right? So just to answer that question from that invisible person, I would use clairsentience. And I would also probably ask Archangel Michael to help me vet them because he's really good at that. If you are able to communicate with spirit, which means you speak the language of the clairs and you're able to have these kinds of conversations on the side, like, okay, hold on gray being alien archangel michael what's going on <laughs> like who is this and do i need to be working with them or not and you would just get the story right if you're a clear audience you just talk to somebody um okay so again if this is kind of like the world that you see yourself staying in like working in you know higher dimensional realms or lower dimensional realms or astral realms you should invest in uh training yourself into the clairs and into channeling you know come on into psychic light we start october 30th which is this Wednesday, very soon. Okay, so the next thing that I want to move on to is even if they are a version of you, you would still want to be careful not to let them in too deeply, like because they are of a lower vibration. I wouldn't allow them to breach my aura shield. So my auric field is around me like a shield, and I would be making sure that when I'm working with them, that my shields are in place. Right, a really strong shield. If to work with a being would be like um, the outer layer of your aura, imagining either white or silver or maybe even gold. No, white or silver would be better actually. Uh, white is the divine purity of God's source, and silver is like armor, spiritual armor. So you could visualize that going all the way around your aura in this egg shape to seal you in, and, and visualize it even being kind of like a hard 
shell. Um, so I definitely wouldn't let anything coming in that closely to me and I would have my shields up at all times, even if it was a version of me. And then, so how would you work with this, this shadow guide? Okay. So say you've come across a version of yourself that is in a lower realm. Well, so these shadow guides, something that they are really good at is they're very fierce protectors if they are working with you and if they are like aware of who you are and your connection. Um, so there is like something to be said for if you are somebody that is experiencing like regular psychic attacks or you're living in a haunted place or you're struggling with, with that kind of issues, um, psychic attacks, hauntings, um, attracting lower energies, that kind of thing, then these shadow beings are very, very good at clearing a space, believe it or not. There's something about because they're from that place, they're able to more physically clear that stuff, um, more so than sometimes even like an angel guide would be able to do. I want to share an example of that. So my husband's shadow guide um, was something that we were both working with because it was a, bar a part of our karmic love story and we were working on healing this being, this this part of him, right? But it was a very real, felt very real and separate being at the time, even though we knew it was a version of him and we were working on healing and clearing this being until we could fully kind of heal them. And, but in the meantime, as we, they were continuing to show up all the time, um, what happened was we were, we went to stay in like an Airbnb that we didn't know was like super haunted. Um, and it was like, we are not getting any sleep. And I remember one night waking up because something walked on top of me like I felt the weight and the feel the outline the feeling of someone's footstep on my ribs like I was on my side and someone just stepped on my ribs and then walked over the bed and you can feel something walking over the bed and there's nothing there like and the it was like um it was a really really old house with a lot of rooms and for some reason our our room was like up in the very top floor in the corner. And when you come out of the room into the hallway, the first thing you see is a crib filled with like dolls. <laughs> and there was even actually a high chair and like a really creepy doll just in the high chair. And I was like, why? Like, I, you might not know this, but like one of my biggest fears is dolls and puppets. And of course, like I couldn't even like, I was just like this when I would leave. But of course that kind of stuff tends to attract, um, entities that are looking for a little shell to animate. Um, that's a whole other video. So the story is that we couldn't get any sleep and we tried clearing with angels and it wasn't working because we couldn't claim the space, right? If it was your own home, you can claim the space, but that was not my home. I tried claiming the room since I was renting the room you know, I'm, I'm paying for this room. I can claim this space and clear it out. But every night it was still happening. And it was getting really bad. I remember Brian having a really scary, scary dream that woke him up, like hyperventilating almost. And it was all just feeling pretty demonic, to be honest with you. And, um, and so we asked the shadow, we tried the angels, right? And so we asked the shadow guide that we were currently working with, which was a version of Brian to, is there anything that you can do about this? And boy, was it happy to have a mission like that. I just remember it was like a black wolf, like, um, like from like the underworld, like this black kind of wolf, creepy being. And it immediately, when we asked for help clearing the space, immediately went and con con confronted the the big main one, which was the one in the high chair. I knew it was the doll in the high chair. That was the one, right? It went right up to it and was like screaming and, and like snarling at it. And then I saw it eat it. <laughs> so it literally ate something like a, like a dark entity that was bothering us each night. And, and then we were there for like 10 nights or something. And then it stopped. And I was like, oh, wow, we spent nights asking for help from the angels. And then we asked this shadow guide that we're working with and it just took care of it. And I was just like, that's the power of working with that. Uh, and I think it's because like frequency, maybe, maybe sometimes the angels are, you know, it's just so far away. And like, um, it takes a lot of the time, a little bit more than that. And this, this shadow guide was like of the same frequency. So it could physically grab onto this little being and do something about it. And it certainly did. So that's a really interesting way that you could be working with a shadow guide. 
Another way is this is this is an I have another example for you, but I'll tell you the thing first. Another way is that they can deepen your own shadow work, where they can help you to purge soul wounds and soul trauma and release grief and and all these lower emotions, right? So this happened. Uh, here's another example. This was a me. This was one of my versions of a shadow guide that I had. Um, it was sad. It wasn't like as fierce as like a wolf. It was actually like a, a swan. I was a swan from sickness, I think it was, and um, had lost uh, my love, the love of my life, and was searching for this, um, and ch- and chose to go searching for um, someone in a lower realm, in in like the underworld, in the dark forest very dangerous to do that. Um, if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever been to the dark forest, I've been there a couple of times now for like soul retrievals and different kinds of things. And it's really intense place to go. Some people call it like the suicide forest. Some people, I mean, I just call it the dark forest. It's in the underworld though. And, um, and as the swan, I chose to go there to find who I, I knew that the, the, my love was there. Right. And that I was trying to go there to find this, 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 this other soul and save them and bring them back kind of thing. But I actually, of course, got lost, lost in the sense of you forget who you are if you're there too long and you start to like your own, you can't be surrounded by that and not start to sink down and into the landscape, into the lower frequency. And then you forget who you are and what you're even doing there. And then you're on a loop of you don't know. You're just, you're on a loop of trauma, fear, searching alone. And like, I could sense this part of myself tuned into this part of myself. and was like, I remember just bawling my eyes out when I first like met her and, and, and found her. And this is kind of like, um, almost a soul retrieval in a way. And, um, and, and, and I, you know, I, I was able to see her story, like by tuning into her soul frequency, and the contracts that she had put into place for that life, I was able to see what she had hoped would happen. And then what did happen. And I was able to purge and to release these lower emotions, because even though it seems like she's a separate soul over here, still having this experience, and I'm here, the truth is that we're the oversoul here. And we've sent little parts of ourselves to have these individual experiences down here. But when we come back together, we're all one, right? And And so I remember being able to clear for her what she couldn't clear. I was able to, because she couldn't remember who she was. So I was able to cry and release and purge all of this deep grief and emotional uh, trauma. And then I was able to actually like cross her over um, into the light. And so that helps her, that helps me, that's going to lift the frequency of my soul. A big soul trauma just got healed. A big soul purge just happened. So that's deepening your shadow work to work with beings in that way. Um, but they're not meant to work with you long-term, your shadow guides. Um, they always come to you in divine orchestration when it's when they are ready to be found, when you are ready to receive it, when the healing is ready to happen, like something is ready or it would not be happening in that moment. So there is a divine orchestration if you come across something like that. Um, And then I would, as a gift to them, you know, work on deepening the, like when you do the shadow work, when you heal, they heal, when they heal, you heal. So help them, right? The way that I helped that swan being, I helped her by grieving it and releasing it for her and um, reminding her of who she was and eventually getting her to cross over. And if you can offer them a crossing like that, it ends their suffering and lightens up all of the soul aspects of you across the board, all the parallel and past and future timelines, everyone heals. And so um, let me know if you want me to do a video about crossing souls over. I don't, have I done that? I've probably talked about it a lot. I have a video on here called how a soul becomes haunted. And I probably talk about it in that video. Uh, But let me know if you want like any of the stuff I'm talking about in like a longer form. Um, So basically, yeah, you can offer them a gift by crossing them over. They're offering you a gift by 
um, being fearsome protectors, helping you to deepen your own shadow work, your own soul work, your own soul healing, purging that trauma, releasing those old emotions, all that stagnancy. And then everyone does a quantum leap forward in frequency and in growth and in consciousness and in all the things And uh, you evolve after that. So after having experience like that, if you're able to help them heal and then cross them over, there's a massive healing for you with, within that, probably within a month's amount of time. And then you'll actually, like what's happened to me before too, is when I've crossed over shadow versions of myself or other people usually within like a month's time they reconnect with you from the other side from the good side right where they're like doing better and are able to have a coherent conversation and say thank you you know that helped me so much and here's what I'm working on now and I'm so grateful or whatever it is it's really helpful so again when they heal you heal when you heal they heal it's all one soul um, of your oversoul, which is just above you. And then we could go deeper in saying, don't make me pull up my diagram that I always pull out, is that all the oversouls of all these different people's soul tribes are also, you go up the family tree bigger and they are a part of the one soul. So we're all from the same soul in the end. Just keeps going up and up and up. Okay. So this also, just the last thought here, this is the end, but the last thought that I had was that this also heals fear of lower realms for people because the more experiences that I've had working with shadow guides, doing soul retrievals, re entity removals, clearings of haunted spaces, like the more work that you do where you have to work in a lower realm or with a lower being, the more that it heals your fear around that. So many of us carry such a fear, especially in the third eye, we carry this fear of uh evil things what we're gonna see and like um afraid to see it afraid to experience it afraid to look i mean there's just so many fears a lot of it's from religious trauma but not all of it um and so you're going to heal a lot of that fear and you're going to get more and more comfortable and more confident in who you are and at this point i've done so much and i've i've cleared so much and i've healed so much and i've dealt with some real dark stuff that you can see here on this channel even in this halloween playlist um me and brian talking about a poltergeist and also how we had to battle a demon like that kind of stuff is very rare it's it's not this like once in a lifetime kind of stuff but when you experience that there is a confidence that you are left with that like if i can do that i can do anything and it also really gave me especially the the demonic um, thing that we had to battle, it gave me such a confidence in my gifts because my gifts were so spot on for that experience. And if I wasn't trained so deeply in the clairs, I would not have been able to do any of it. Because if you can't see, hear, feel, and know what is happening around you that's not in 3D, right? Like we had to astral travel to confront this demonic being and again there's a whole story around that that you can look that you can watch in that video on the halloween playlist um i mean even astral traveling this is all stuff that i had to learn how to do right so your clairs are your telephone lines to higher and lower dimensions any any non-physical dimension when i say non-physical i mean we just consider 3D the only physical dimension, but that's not actually true. Um, it's it's all about frequency matching. If you matched yourself to the seventh dimension, you would appear, you would think it was physical because you were a frequency match to that. Um, so wherever you're a match to is the realm that feels physical, right? Does that make sense? Uh, so anyway, if I did not have the ability to see, feel, hear, and know, to astral travel, to communicate with spirit, to do all of these things, I would not be in the in the confident state that I am now, and I would not have been able to have success with a lot of these experiences. And uh, having those kinds of experiences gives you massive, massive boost in confidence around that. So it's not bad, but you do need to know what you're doing in order to even think about working with a shadow guide. And so this is a really good segue for me to let you know that Psychic Light starts on Wednesday, October 30th. So very, very soon. Um, this is a certified course where you become a certified master channeler. I teach you the language of the Claire's deeply, deeply, deeply. There's also a whole uh, module around soul gifts, 
Uh, we're going to talk about Star Nations Alliance. We're going to talk about pre preparation in the sacred space. I'm going to do psychic block removals for every student, as well as psychic reconnections of all of your clairs to the pineal gland. Then we're going to do um, the clairs, one week for each clair. We're going to go very deeply into each clair, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, claircognizance. They are the foundation for every single spiritual gift out there that exists. I don't care who you are or what you do. It's the clairs that you're using for everything that you do. If it's a spiritual gift, shamans, light language artists, channelers, mediums, energy healers, it's all the clairs. Um, so you're going to learn each one of those. And then you're going to learn written channeling, spoken channeling, trans channeling, light language, soul language. And if that's not enough, I also teach you how to read the Akashic Records and be an astral guide. So do astral journeys for yourself or groups of people. This sets you up with that confidence. You hone your gifts, you hone your gifts down to be sharp and you become so confident in them that it sets you up to start taking clients, start your spiritual business. If you already have a spiritual business, this just takes you to a whole nother level. Your offers are going to go from like, you know, where they're at now to this super, super high value, like, um, stand out from the crowd, extremely accurate, detailed offers. Energy healers come to me a lot. And I teach them how to incorporate channeling into their healing, light language coding into their healing. Um, card readers come to me a lot, tarot, oracle, all of that. I teach them how to stop um, like using the cards as a crutch. You can use them, but I teach you how to not need them, which is a way, way different, and to, and to read them in a different way. Um, I mean, like energy healers, card readers, um, mediums, I get a lot of mediums that come to me. And then I obviously just get a lot of awakening star seeds that are like, I'm actually not sure what my gifts are. That's the perfect opportunity for you to discover what your gifts are and master them and come out of that course, not only certified, but ready to take clients like truly. Um, so come on into Psychic Light. I'll make sure there's a link below. There's lots of convenient like payment plans. Right now, there's a ton of bonuses running. Um, so yes, do, do definitely come on inside. And again, that is starting this Wednesday. So check out the link for the entire curriculum. Everything's laid out for you through the link. All right. Thank you so much for being here for another video. I want to thank you so much for all of your support. Always. I look forward to your comments. And before you go, please remember, listen to your heart and the quiet voice within because you are so much more than the body you are in. I love you, beautiful starseed. Thank you. Bye.